city life. It includes traffic, noise, and way more pavement than anyone who owns a Jeep ever wants to drive on. Even with a beautiful city like my hometown of Edmonton, I welcome any reason to head to the mountains. With June being the wettest I've seen it here in a few years, it has made finding runnable trails very difficult. Nevertheless, I am leading a small group on a couple of expeditions to the Lost Knife Trail. Both trips saw overnight rain with clearing during the day. Conditions would range from mud in the flats to moist trails going through the trees and dry conditions at the summits. The Lost Knife Trail is located in the Ghost Public Land Use Zone, PLUS for short. Given its convenient central location, this is one of Alberta's go-to recreational areas for off-roading. Until now, my expeditions have been mostly attended by Jeep enthusiasts. But the two trips I made to Lost Knife, I saw a bit more diversity. So it's a 1990 Suburban, um, second last year of the square body. They made them from like 1973 to 1991, so quite a long span. Um, yeah, it, it sat for 18 or 20 years. Engine was seized up. I bought it for like 1200 bucks and got the engine unseized and put it back on the road last summer. Done a couple trips with it now. Uh, Ruby Falls was the most recent one. three stroker engine in it right now but I'm in the process of uh, putting together a six liter LS engine in my garage right now that uh, I'll be swapping into it soon so uh, well, I've got a 2007 FJ Cruiser it's got 35 inch uh, mud terrains on it it's got a long travel ca total chaos front suspension uh, three inch rear lift light bars I have uh, just the stock lockers I don't have a winch because you do so I don't don't need that in the front and rear bumper so Ty's day job is just a bit different than nearly everyone else's. I am a professional radio control race car driver. Ty, along with around 30 other people in the world, get paid full-time salaries to race toy cars for bowling trophies. I travel the world racing uh, and trying to, to win races, basically with remote control cars. But to be completely honest, these really aren't toy cars. This career takes Ty all around the world to compete. He is paid by several of the manufacturers in the industry, and the more he wins, the more he makes, which is good because his FJ really needs locking diffs and a gear swap. Ty does win quite a lot. He was actually the world champ in 2014. Today, his office is behind the wheel of his FJ, not his RC car. As with most trails in the ghost area, the mountain vistas did not disappoint. The conditions, on the other hand, were a bit disappointing. Well, for those of us who like a clean rig, at least. For the first expedition, the trail was just a bit moist. Well, it was really more like dirt soup. Cows didn't seem to mind the muck, and to be honest, none of our rigs really seemed to mind it that much either. Given all the rain, we made sure to check out each bridge before crossing, but that being said, the water levels were surprisingly low. Conditions in the flats continue to be a bit sloppy, but to be honest, I can see this part being just a little bit boring. The mud added an extra element of complexity. But none of us had any issues making it through any of these obstacles. This section of the trail is actually pretty easy.
things get way more fun once you reach trail marker number 88 and hang a right to climb the mountain. Not only was this where the trail started to dry up, this was also where it got a bit more challenging. It's been fun. It's uh, a little bit more hilly than home, so it's cool to be doing that. And uh, I almost got stuck in a trail rut. I couldn't turn up the hill, but I wouldn't say stuck yet. So it's it's good. So is this a lot of fun? Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a nice change of pace for me. Have you ever done this before? Just like casual stuff. Nothing really as extreme as this. Even though I mean we haven't got stuck yet, so it's not that extreme. But it's it's more extreme than what I've done. The first climb was a lot of fun. The trail turned from mud to rocks. It was in this section that we would encounter our first real obstacle, a tree. It really doesn't matter what trail you're doing, or the season you're doing it in, always make sure you come prepared. There's nothing worse than having to turn back as a result of something as trivial as a fallen down tree. Before long, we were back on our way up the mountain. This is where the Lost Knife Trail gets really fun. There are two sets of switchbacks. One is an elevation game, the other is a descent. I'm not sure which I like better, Either way, this is my favorite part of the trail. Just before the final set of switchbacks, we ran into yet another familiar foe. Now break it. Now just gonna break and go underneath. Much to Tessman's relief, that would be our third and final tree. With the switchbacks behind us, it was a nice easy ride along the edge of the mountain. The views up here were absolutely amazing. The descent was relatively simple, and the only obstacle that remained was one last puddle. I had hopes that this puddle would free up some of the caked on mud for my undercarriage. It's debatable if it had any effect at all. We were looking at some major car washes either way. We ended our day with a quick run down the Transalta Trail. It was here that we found one final obstacle that Ruby made with ease. Having to climb up that one, try to climb up that one hill after you, it's not really fair, but you'll probably never let that one go. I am never gonna let Tasman 
forget about that one. I have to admit, my descent wasn't as slick. <laughs> it was good. We didn't get stuck, didn't wreck anything. What was your highlight? Uh, probably the switchback section up and down those pretty steep spots and it was pretty cool. Did you do it again? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it again. Well, we did the Lost Knife Trail. It was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that trail. Uh, the weather looked super sketchy. Um, the region, I think, has had some crazy amount of rain. I, I think it was something like 50 centimeters or 75 centimeters of rain over the past week. So I was actually contemplating canceling the event. But at the end of the day, I'm actually really, really glad that I didn't cancel it because it was just absolutely beautiful. Like, you know, sure the trail was muddy and stuff, but you know, it was a beautiful day. It was not super hot, not cold at all. It was uh, basically perfect conditions. As far as the trail goes, really enjoyed it. I mean, it started out kind of easy, so I was like kind of thinking, okay, is this it? Is this, there gonna be any challenges here? But as soon as you make that turn to the right and go up that hill, after that, it gets super fun. And the switchbacks, oh man, the switchbacks were, uh, I'm just beaming about the switchbacks. They were so much fun. Another adventure comes to an end. I thoroughly enjoyed this trail both times I did it. Well, except for the mud. It's a great trail offering just enough challenges for more experienced off-roaders, but it's not too intimidating to force new off-roaders to invest in new driver's seat upholstery. This trail is about a two hour run and it will give you a small taste of what the ghost region has to offer. And I can't wait to explore this region further, but that's another video. In the meantime, like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.